Well, welcome, you guys, to Actualizing Dreams. Uh, for those of you that I haven't met yet, hi, I'm Crystal. And uh, one of the reasons I love Zoom is I get to see your beautiful faces. And if you're hiding your beautiful face, I still see you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> um, this is a fucking fun call. I am really excited about this. Um, this is kind of the first time I've been willing to start talking about uh, how I created income, how I got to where I am, how I'm continuing to create this $10,000 a month thing. Well, it's over that now, which is really, really fun. Um, and so I, it, with the, for the sign up form, you guys know that registered for it. I asked you if you had one question for Crystal. Well, now I have like 150 questions for Crystal, which we're not going to get through in this hour. So how does it get better than that? Um, so I'm going to start with some stuff. And as I start and as I'm talking about things, if you guys have questions um, for me, for the process, about anything, just let me know. I'm going to give you as much as I can in this hour. And then at the end of this, um, you're going you're gonna to get the recording and you're going to get an invitation to a strategy session with me if that's something that you want to do for you and your business. And then you all got the email. So there's a creation mentorship after that. So no secrets. I'm not hiding anything. Um, I do want to go, though, give you as much as in this hour as I possibly can so that if that isn't for you, that you can take away this call and actually use this in your life. So a lot of you want to know what's my secret. <laughs> which is a really fun question because there isn't one. And, and how do you get started? Um, I, if, you, if you paid attention to my videos, I kind of shared a lot of this already and I don't really want to go over the same material, but this whole question of like, how do you get started with an online business is a, is a practical question. I remember when I was first getting involved in the online world and um, creating my thing, um, I was aware that there was, there was skills and there was pragmatics that I was definitely missing. And so, like I said in some of my videos, I started working with a certified facilitator who already had an online business. So I knew I could learn quickly and I had all these skills and I also knew that my presence expanded things and so I got involved with her. And so I learned how to do hangouts and I learned how to do email lists and I learned how to do, um, there's like 25 different online skills that you could probably use to learn um, to do an online business. So I learned that doing her business. The other piece that that gave me was it gave me visibility. And that was an awareness that I had really early on that in a virtual world, um, unlike the real world, in a virtual world, I had to create visibility. I couldn't just like, you know, post what I had for dinner that night and expect everybody to like it. Like I had to actually create a connection with people online. And so that required of me to be and do something different. Uh, when, I, when I was first uh, kind of coming into the Facebook world, I would post these really cryptic things, these one-liners of like, I don't even, I mean, I can't even think of an example now, but I go back into my Facebook like 2012 and I read what I wrote. And I'm like, nobody would have known what was going on in my life by what I wrote right there. Like nobody, it was like, it was so like shrouded in mystery and humor and, and sarcasm and nobody could get what was going on with me. And so as I got started playing with Heather, Heather Nichols in her business, um, I started posting like crafting stories about moments I was having. And a lot of you have been following me. So you know what that, that showed up like, um, and what that started doing is it started reflecting pieces, other pieces of their lives, other people's lives um, in what I was writing. It was like I was able to look into their world, take a moment out of their life, put it into words. And they were like, oh, that, yes, those are the words I've been looking for all my life, that moment. And for me, writing was the skill. Writing was one of the things that I did really well. Um, I didn't really start getting into video until like a while later, but I used what I had. I was really good at writing. I used my writing and I started putting myself out there. Um, and so that was, that's really is the first thing I want to invite you guys to, because in creating an online business, you can start with, well, what program can I create? Which is a good question. But what really creates an online business first is creating the connections with people. And so if you're going to start your online business on Facebook, you want to look at what, what does create connections with people on Facebook? If you want to start your online business with an email list, which I'm reading a book right now called Launch um, with, what's his name, Jeff Walker, that is really, really good. And he created his whole online business with a very, very small email list. Then you've got to start asking, what, would it, what does it take to create connections using this email list? 
And that doesn't have an answer to it. That's got awarenesses with it. And that's going to have create like creative explorations with it. Like what does that take? Who is doing that? Who could show me the shortcut to that? Um, Okay, so that's the first major, major piece. So when I really look at my online business, I really spent probably six to eight months creating connections with people. And I didn't even have that word in my head. I wasn't like, I'm creating connections with people, right? Like I was just out there sharing myself and people started responding to it. And I'm like, oh, they like this. Well, I guess I'll keep doing that. I happen to be having another really shitty moment right here. So I'll share that one, <laughs> right? <laughs> in a way that was relatable, in a way that was like, hey, I'm not just vomiting on you. I'm like, hey, I had this moment and then I found this tool and wow, what a difference. Um, because what you're creating there is you're creating an opening for people to have hope, for people to have somebody to connect to, for people to have, oh my God, I'm not alone. Oh my God, there's actually a tool. Oh my God, there's something else that's truly possible. You can be that all you want in the privacy of your own home. But if you do not share that with the world, we will never know about it. Now, it's not that you, this isn't the call about you being you changing the world sitting in your house because you do do that, by the way. <laughs> This is the call about how do you be you changing the world in your house and share that with other people so that it creates something. So everything that doesn't allow you to be, know, perceive, and receive the brilliance that you could actualize as who you are already, will you destroy it and create that? Yes. Right, goodbye, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Okay, cool. So we might have another call someday about you being you changing the world sitting in your house. But today, this is the you being you changing the world getting outside of your house. And the coolest thing about the internet is that it is a worldwide market. It is a global market if you allow it to be. I started out on Facebook, I think, with 400 friends two, two years ago. Today, I've got 2,500 friends. I've got 1,000 people on my page. That is not what Elizabeth Gilbert has. She has 30 million likes and however many friends. You know, that is not what Blossom has. Blossom has 8,000 likes and 5,000 friends. And Corey Michelle has different. And from where I was before, I've created so much. So it doesn't matter where you are today. What matters is that you're willing to start now. Now, where am I going from today? Well, I'm looking at what would it take to have 10,000 people interacting and playing with me globally all the time with a lot of ease. And then what am I going to ask for after that? I don't know. We'll see when we get there, right? So what do you want to begin asking for and being and instituting in the world? What can you begin to use from your life that would begin to create openings for other people to connect to you? And how can you begin to interact with them? Okay, that's piece, huge, massive piece number one <laughs> for the online business. Um, so that's before even you start putting anything out into the world of, hey, I've got this great program. Because when you start putting that stuff out there, who's going to respond? Who even knows who you are, right? You've got all of these ideas for these great programs. Awesome. Write them down. I'm not saying don't create them. Ask where they want to be created, how they want to be created. Get a notebook and call it your possibilities notebook. I have this right here, notebook of possibilities with room for mar margins and notes in the margins, right? Get a notebook and start writing all of your stuff down, fleshing out your ideas. Um, and begin creating connections with people. Start sharing your stuff. Start sharing your life. Now, step two, once that's established, you want to begin looking at what's asking to be in the world. Now, when I first started creating, like, okay, so I'd been creating connections. I was aware that there was, I had a presence. I had a following of some sort. You know, I had, I had this energy. People kind of, some people, I had a small group of people that knew who I was. Um, George Carroll popped out of the woodwork at me because I started looking at what he was creating and I'm like, okay, that guy doesn't have every energy I'm interested in, but he knows how to implement ideas onto the online platform. And I got that I didn't have those skills. So I hired him for four sessions, which was a huge choice for me at the time. And during our first session, we did some very pragmatic things. We picked a date for my first telecall. And I was, I was sweating. I was like, it was like a month out. We picked a date for my first telecall. We then went through and we titled it together. And we looked at, okay, so what does this call want to be? We started asking it questions. And I started, I think I had a full page of titles. I, at that time, I wasn't titling everything in sight. It was like, now I title everything. I title this pen. This is a good program. I, I like titling. But at that point, I didn't have 
you know, um, a lot of skills with that. So he's like, okay, so let's look at some of the things people struggle with and some of the things they truly desire. And what can you create around those two things? So we finally came up with this title, Out Creating Your Limitations, which really just captured the energy. And so we had a title, we had a date. And then he said, okay, so what platform are you going to use? And I'm like, what are you talking about? What does that mean? So we picked out a telecall platform. We got me signed up on that. I'm like, I'm through this whole thing. I'm like, I'm sweating bullets. Cause I'm like, who's going to come and come? Like, what if nobody shows up? And then what if they do show up? What am I going to say? Anyway, that was fine. It was a month out. I had a month to sweat. Um, we, um, Let's see, what else did we do? I hired a graphic designer to create my graphics. Because there's two, there's an awareness that I had coming into this that I, I get that a lot of people don't get. And this is something I really want to share with you. Professional graphics and professional photographs create a lot. Okay? Now, if you don't have them right now, I'm not saying make yourself wrong. But I am saying look at what it would take to get them done as soon as possible with total ease. Um, before I ever became a certified facilitator, I went and got my photo, my I went and had a professional photo shoot and I got all these photos done and I started posting them. That was kind of step number one to people going, whoa, who is that chick, right? I was using this to my advantage. How many of you are actually using your visage to your advantage? Not enough of you? I see a bunch of beautiful people on here that are not using it to their advantage. So everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy and create all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all land, shorts, boys and mounds. Look, you guys picked this body. It happens to look very good no matter what your judgments are of it. That's another call. Um, what can you do or choose or create that would start to use your body to your advantage? Danielle, did you have something? Yeah, I was wondering, so how, how much do you step into the vulnerability of, um, you know, looking like a regular on a regular day to make creation points there? And when are you being professional? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Well, I just look at the energy. So it's like when I... When I'm creating a telecall or I'm creating a program, I look, at, I look through my photographs and I'm like, which one's going to create the most? And I just look because every, every photograph has a totally different energy. So which one's going to create the most? And I pick the one that pops. Sometimes I'll hand them over to Shana and I'm like, you pick. And she picks one I never would have picked. And then I try to change it. And she was right. So, um, you know, so I look at the energy. Uh, for Weird Business, which um, created very differently than I expected it to, I picked a photograph I never would have picked with me smiling with all my teeth and like, you know, just grinning up, covered in flowers and whatever. Um, but I got that that was the energy of what this program was. So I just follow the energy. Is that helpful? Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering also with your posts and everything, because when you're doing like business, it's pretty obvious that you use professional photos, right? Because that's, that's slightly different, but doing posts and everything. It's not always having someone doing your makeup and everything, you know? Absolutely not. And I've done videos with no makeup and I've done videos with full makeup. And so I just look at the energy and I'm like, okay, what's going to create the most? Um, sometimes my bathtub video creates the most. Other times it's me full on like potent as I, you know, in my total potency with my earrings and my bedroom behind me, you know, like, so it, it's just like, what energy am I, what am I creating? And and sometimes it's the vulnerability of me and sometimes it's the potency of me and I just use it all. And, and, and the, the piece I really want to emphasize around this is that one, there's, as you know, there's no right answer. And two, I've been really willing to play with this, you guys. Like I've created a lot of stuff that doesn't create anything. It just kind of goes meh, right? And so I'm like, okay, cool. That went meh. And what else can I choose now? I wonder what else I can play with that might create something. The bath, I did a bathtub video that got 1,400 views. That was so weird. I didn't expect that to create anything at all. I was, I was half in the bag. I had had a couple glasses of wine. I was in the bathtub. I was having this moment, and it was like people loved that. And that's so cool. Like, I didn't know what that was going to create. I didn't have a, a map, you know, for that. So I literally am, and this is a, this is a huge piece. I'm, I'm willing to trust myself, and I'm willing to play. So what energy, space, and consciousness can you and your bodies be to trust your own instincts with total ease. Everything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy and create it all? Right, run, get bad, pod, pod, call, nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And listen, hey, if, you, if there's any of you guys that aren't really totally familiar with access consciousness, go check out theclearingstatement.com if you wanna know what that statement is that I just said. Um, 
So I trust myself and I play and I play kind of wild sometimes. I'm like, I wonder what this is going to create, you know, kind of like a cowboy. So what energy, space, and consciousness can you and your bodies be to be the cowboy you truly be? And everywhere where you're trying to get it right and trying to be perfect, could we destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, call, name, shirts, boys, and beyonds. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know where I was going after that, but so getting started. Oh, so creating my first telecall. So professional graphics are another really key thing. Now, I'm not saying don't go on to canva.com and make your graphics. Like, do that. I do that. And in the beginning, when you're creating something, what is it you want to create? What image do you want to project? Because the truth about virtual business, actually the truth about life, is that people will look at you and create projections about you immediately. So you've got to be willing to use that to your advantage. Like what projections do you want to create? Um, I went to my first big level two and three access class um, from, I went to a foundation and this was my first two and three. I showed up in jeans, kind of torn jeans and t-shirt and like a sweater. And I was walking around the class and the first person I saw was Daria. She is walking around in her four inch heels, like in this beautiful, like tight um, silk black dress. And I wanted to do her and I don't do girls. I was just like, oh my God. And I kept looking at like all the chicks in access that are like really high up. And I'm like, wow, there's something there that I know something about that I'm not being right now. And I never showed up to another access class after that without heels and dresses and looking like I was making a million dollars because what I got was that if I was willing to look it and be it, that I could have it. That's why I started to get that. Now, I didn't even have, I will, I don't know, I've got your, I see your hand. I wasn't totally aware of what that was going to create for me. But I will tell you that within months, I was working for other people with a lot of ease because I was being something different. I was showing up as the energy that I wanted to create in the world, even though it wasn't actualized in my life yet. So where are you not doing that? And where could you start doing that? What is what you're wearing now around town? And what is that creating for you? And what, and, and so when you, so that's around town and in life and in real life classes. So how does that translate onto an internet business? Like when you're, when you're putting yourself out there online, how does that translate? I don't know exactly. I, I play with it and I see sometimes that's showing up as in, in my full glory. Sometimes, like I said before, it was the bathtub video. So you got to be willing to play with that, but you have to be willing to have the awareness that everything you choose creates something. Well, I want people to just like me for who I am. Cool. That's awesome. Is what you're choosing to be creating what you'd like to have. You just got to be willing to ask yourself that question. Okay. So that's a huge piece of it. Um, Somebody asked me, like, there was a lot of questions, like, how do, I, how do I keep choosing and choosing, and how do you keep out creating? Your, oh, Ann, did you have a question before I get into that next point? Are you good? Okay, cool. Um, how do you keep choosing and choosing? How do you keep out creating yourself? Like, you're constantly creating. You're unstoppable. How do you keep doing that? Um, and then somebody asked, what's the question that creates the most or keeps you in that creation space? And I, I had to sort of look at this because I'm like, is, is it one question? Because I definitely don't ask just one question. Or is there, is there an overarching drive forward for me? And I was like, yeah, there really, really is. And it really is, what is the future I desire to create? Because I had this real epiphany. I've, I've, it's been a, a kind of a recurring epiphany. I've been getting it in layers. But this last um, April, when I was, when Dane and Gary were in Vancouver for 10 days for the rewrite of Foundation, Dane was here for ESB, and there was 10 days of video filming. And we were making all kinds of new videos for Access that aren't out yet, they're still being produced, but we were capturing the footage for them. And one of the things I became aware of, there was, there was, a, there was a series of things I became aware of. One is that Gary had created a lasting, like, entity legacy on this planet with what he had created with access consciousness he had created facilitators of this thing he has created um like leaders of of these tools like he has he has created something that when he goes if it's managed properly is going to stay around and just expand um, and he's also like looking at, you know, buying tracts of land like with El Lugar and he's looking at creating schools and stuff like that. And I started looking at his world and I'm like, I'm not asking or looking big enough for what it is that I desire to create on the planet. 
you know, I keep asking like, what does it take to create $10,000 a month so I can go to these classes? And this call is about that. But the thing that keeps me creating isn't that. That's what starts to show up as I create from the energy that is, what's the future I desire to create on the planet? So where are you limiting yourself to creating a meager $10,000 a month? And I use meager on purpose. It's like energy, money's just an energy. It's just a number. It allows you to choose things. It allows you to be things. It allows you to have more choices. It allows you options. What are the options you would like to have? Sure, would you like to travel? Put that in the energy. Would you like to have, be able to go to all the access classes you want? Yes. Would you like to have a worldwide team? Sure. Would you like to have nice clothes and go to nice dinners? And all of that's in there. And what's the future you desire to create on the planet? Why did you come here? Why did you come here? What did you know before you chose to take this body that led you to access, that led you to this moment, that led you to this call? Why did you come here? Was it to make $10,000 a month or was it something else? Everything that doesn't allow you to be, know, perceive, and receive what you already know about what you chose when you came to this planet, will you destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, call, my shorts, boys, and beyond. That's what motivates me. That's what keeps me creating. That's where I know I need to make 30, 80, 90, $100,000 a month. Because I got shit to do on this planet and I can't do it on 30 grand or three grand. You know, I can't do that. I can't create the, the impact that I want to create on this planet with that kind of money. I'm not willing to be that small. I'm not willing to not receive judgment from people and be that small. Their judgment is irrelevant to what it is I want to create on the planet. So what is that for you? What is the future you desire so much that they can all go fuck themselves very much and I'm going to go ahead and create the possibilities that I know are possible. So everything that you can't and don't want to and refuse to perceive, know, receive, and be, ugh, perceive, know, be, and receive about that, can we destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys, and beyond. So what's crazy about that is that that creates money. <laughs> That might seem irrelevant, but that actually creates money. So how many of you guys are getting so micro-focused on the money that you are not actually being the energy of what it is you'd like to create in the world? So everywhere you're functioning from need, lack, and every other lie that you've been implanted and explanted with about money, can we destroy and create all that? Right, run, good, bad, pop, pop, call, land, shorts, boys, and beyond. Okay, cool. Whew. Anybody have any questions? Is that... Sort of, sorry, I gotta run. This is terrific. Okay, cool. So actually, it's about vulnerability and being me. Yes, actually, it is about vulnerability and being you. Okay, cool. Um, so the pragmatics of that, that, that is what keeps me creating. And I am always looking at, there's, there's always two pieces to this. There's, there's the what I can be that's gonna create what I want on the planet. And then there's the doing, there's the action steps. I'm always looking at both. I never exclude one. So one of the things that I became aware of with what I was creating online was that I had kind of hit a, a threshold. Energetically, I'd hit a threshold with what I was choosing. You know, in the access world, we've got all these amazing Facebook groups. You can share all your stuff. People are like kind of ignoring it now because everything gets shared in there. They're like, wah, 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 another call, another call, right? So I've been looking at what else is possible with that. What can I be or do different to outcreate that system that a lot of people are going wah, 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 wah with, right? So cool, that's one way of promoting and I'm not excluding it. And what else is there? So I'm constantly looking at what else is there. So like I was saying before, I've started reading Jeff Walker's launch book. Jeff Walker is a humanoid of magnitude. And yes, he ascribes to a formula. And there's a lot of pieces in it that fucking work. How many of you guys are excluding this reality and not using this reality to your advantage? I want to create a different reality. I don't want to create this reality. And yet we have this reality with the way it functions, with the fact that people function from thoughts, feelings, and emotions. That is how they function. You are the 1%. We've got the 99% of the other people on the planet that function poorly. <laughs> okay? You guys are the exception to the rule. You're not the rule. So what is the rule? How do people function? How can you use that to your advantage? 
So I read through this book. He's got some really cool tips. He's like, this is how you do a launch. These are the steps. This is, these are a bunch of stories that prove that this works. And I'm like, I wonder what that would create. So I started playing differently. I got very different responses to my videos. I got very different responses to my programs. And now I'm looking at like, what would it take to launch something that a hundred thousand people know about? What do I have to do or be different? Where are you keeping your ideas and your awareness, your zone of awareness so small that you can't begin to perceive the billions of people on the planet, all the possibilities that you could actually choose and be and have. Right? So the pragmatics of that are putting different kinds of steps into place. So to do those steps, I had to do something different with my videos. I had to post them differently. I had to um, say different things and then make that look natural. <laughs> I had to make that my own. And he was like, okay, you got to say this and this and this in your video. And I'm like, I'm going to do that in a way that's me. But that's the question. Not how am I going to do his formula? It's, oh, I see your formula. Okay, I kind of like what you're doing there. Oh, okay, I see the brilliance there. Now, how am I going to implement that in a way that's me? I had to play around with that. I deleted like six videos. It wasn't great. Because I realized that if it wasn't me being me out there, if it wasn't being like this bubbly, brilliant, badass thing that I can be sometimes, like it wasn't going to create anything. So I played with it and I was willing to play with it. I was willing to totally fuck it up, actually. I was willing for it to flop and it didn't. So that's some of the pragmatics of going, okay, what brilliance is out there and how can I use that to my advantage to create what I want to create? Uh, Shauna, you had a question. Yeah, hi. Um, so I've been able to like say, okay, this is what I would like and make a demand. And every time I get what like I would like and it happens instantly, it's not quite exactly what like it's it's what I asked for however I would like something bigger and like more than like like a place to live or whatever and I'm getting all these really cool places and it's what I'm asking for um I guess my question is like how, do I have to be really specific like do I have to be more specific and be like hey more this more that and be really specific with everything that I would like or like how do I make how do I expand upon the reality or ask for something greater and get more clear like do I have to be more clear or something well let me ask you a question because you actually know more about this than you're acknowledging so truth do you need to be more clear yes or no <laughs> uh, that's not a thinking question darling no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay well that so is that true well, maybe I have to be more clear. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing about your awareness, and I want to use this as a, an example, and then we'll come back to your question. Okay. Your awareness about things is split second. Okay, so like when I ask a question, this is how we facilitate an access consciousness for those of you that don't know. When I ask you a question and I preface it with truth, the first thing is you can't lie to me. So I'm going to hear what's true before it comes out of your mouth. So if what comes out of your mouth doesn't match what I already got in my head, then it's not true. Uh, because I asked truth and so what's true has to show up or the lie is really obvious. So why is no a lie? And why is that? Why am I even pointing that out? Because when you don't acknowledge what it is that you know about something, you are not empowered to change anything. Okay. And the thing is like, we will discount our awareness quicker than we'll discount anything else on the planet because it doesn't make sense, because it doesn't match what we've already decided, because it doesn't match what we thought we heard, that it doesn't, that, that, because it doesn't match. But your awareness doesn't match necessarily anything. It's just what's true. So everything you've already decided, judged, concluded, or computed about where to live or anything else that this brings up for you guys, can we destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all night, shorts, boys and beyonds. Anything that you've decided, judged, computed, or concluded, about how to ask for things. Can we just try and create all of that? Time is a godzillion, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nature, it's boys and beans. So Shauna, I'll give you a quick example and then we'll come back and see if there's more there. So when I was looking for a place to live in Vancouver, I was really clear on what I wanted. I wanted a main level of a house, lots of light, in Kitsilano, um, near the water, at a certain price point. And then I just started looking online and I found like 11 things that weren't that. I was, willing to, I was willing to choose them because we needed a place to live. Um, and then I, had a, I got into a random Facebook chat with a friend, and he was like, have you checked Kijiji? I said, no, it was light. I went. The first ad up there 
was the main level of a house with lots of light in Kitsilano for a price point. He just lowered it $100. So truth, you need to be more specific. <laughs> and I'm not saying that you have to do that with everything, but you definitely do have to get a clear sense of what it is that you want. So this condo that I'm in now definitely didn't show up in the way that I thought it would in the area of town that I thought it would. And it had all of the energies I was asking for. The energies of wealth. It had the space that I wanted. It had the light that I wanted. It had the, the two rooms that I wanted. It had the proximity to the public transit that I wanted. Like it had everything that I wanted. It just didn't show up anywhere like I thought it would. So when, when you're not getting what you're asking for, what can you add to what you're asking for? You know, like if what you're asking for is a $10,000 a month business and that's not showing up the way you'd like it to, what else can you be asking for that would create it showing up? Like what can you add to what you're asking for? So I don't know what that is for you. Like my $10,000 a month business didn't show up till I added more people and I added bodies and I added promoters and I added like more conversations with maestros and I added like... I'm like, what does it take to do this? Because I wasn't not having it anymore. Like there was this demand in my world of like, this is going to show up. So what does it take? Who do I have to talk to? What can I create that? Do you notice that energy? That's like, I'm not looking for wrongness anywhere in that. That is like, no, this is possible. I'm having it and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to be a honey badger until I find the way to have it. Because it exists. The way to have it exists. Where have you made what you want so inconceivable that even you can't find it? And everything that is where you destroy and create it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nature, it's boys and beyonds. What you desire exists. It might not exist on this planet yet, but you being willing to go after it and ask for it and be the energy of it makes it possible. So Shauna, did that totally just how's that <laughs> uh that's that's really good because uh i guess it is like what else can i add to what i'm asking for and and, and go from there cool um, yeah and be willing to play with it like be willing to fuck it up be willing to get too specific <laughs> mm -hmm. and or like or be the energy of it i guess isn't well it? yeah absolutely be the energy of it and like in in this whole asking thing you guys you're not you're gonna do it wrong. You're going to ask conclusions with question marks attached accidentally. And you're going to like, you're going to not be the energy of something and you're going to, you're going to fuck it up. So be willing to fuck it up. Be willing to go, okay, well, what I've been doing over here isn't working. So I wonder what this will create. I'm going to ask for like gold ceilings and mm, for $200 a month and see what shows up. Like, you know what? Be willing to play with it and not have to get it correct. And what is the energy of the place you want to live in? Like, what, what, what is that? Like, downtown was the energy that I was aware of that I really wanted. Like, what's the energy of your place? Is it by the water? Um, is it, I, I guess it's also, like, I think about money as well. And I'd be, like, so a lot of places in Vancouver are, like, $3,000, $1,000, $2,000, all these thousands of dollars. And I'm, like, looking at what I make already. And so there's like that limitation. However, if I had all the money, I'd be willing to spend it on these places. And now like I'm kind of looking to what works for the money that I have right now, which is whatever it is. Uh, so I guess there's that. Okay, cool. So I'm going to use that and expand out on it. And we're going we're gonna to bring it back to you. So how many of you guys are trying to fit your big dreams into the limitations that you are currently functioning from? You are not alone, Ms. Shauna. So everything <laughs> that is times a godzillion, we destroy and create all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, call, land, shorts, boys and beans. Okay, let me give you a tip. That does not work. It just doesn't work. It's just simple. It doesn't make you wrong. It just doesn't work. So you, simp you really do, if you want a bigger life, if you want more money, if you want a bigger place, Shauna, this is definitely applies to your situation. You've got to be willing to ask the question of, if money weren't an object, what would I choose? You have to be willing to function from that question. There is no other choice. Because if you don't function from that question, you're going to be looking at your current circumstances and limiting yourself with those. You're going to be looking at your debt going, I don't have the money to do that. Well, that's true. It's not here yet. And you now have the point of view that you don't have it. So now it's really true. 
if money weren't an object, what would I choose? Opens up the space and you're like, Jesus, I would choose that. I would choose that. I would choose that. That's how I created my whole fucking access journey. Like I wouldn't have gone on any one of those classes if I hadn't asked myself that question because I didn't have the money. So if money weren't an object, if money weren't a thing, if money weren't a limiting factor, what would I choose? So Shauna, as you look at places, start asking yourself that question. If money weren't an object, what would I choose? That's at least, at the very least, going to give you an awareness of what you truly desire. And if you start looking at those places and you go seeing those places and you're like, fuck, I have to have this, that's when there gets a demand created in your world of like, cool, what's, what's it going to take to create the money to have this? And that's what's going to start opening up your awareness to like, okay, how many bars can I run? How many classes can I give? Like, what else is possible? How many massages can I do on Craigslist? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Personal ads are always an option. What else is possible? What else is possible, indeed. Yeah. Um, I love my friend Daria. You guys know Daria Hansen. She's, um, she moved to Vancouver for a while, and I remember um, walking with her. We had both traveled to Vancouver for a class. Um, she, had, she was still living in Kelowna. She wasn't living in Vancouver. She was going through a split up with her husband. I remember walking up the street from going to lunch during one of the days of classes, and she looked up at those Coal Harbor buildings out on the water in Vancouver, and she's like, those condos for the one that I want is $2,800 a month, which is $800 more than I make in a month. And I'm having that. And I was like, at that time I was still working on expanding my money reality. And I was like, Oh my God, that's so cool. Sure enough. In another couple of months, she was living in that condo and she simply chose it and created the money to have it. And what happened to her income is I think it tripled her income tripled. That should not be true. It shouldn't, that should not be a true, but it is true. Um, this place that I'm living in now costs double what I was living in before. My income is going up. Because what goes on is that when you're willing to choose those things that are outside of what you've decided is possible, the energies that they are contribute to you. You then get to be in the energy that they are. Like this condo building in Yale Town is like, we are in money like all over the place down here. Like money just floats through the air energetically down here. So I don't have points of view now about like the points of view that I used to have about bills and all of that just aren't sticking. And this is something you don't get is like everything contributes an energy to your life. You know, the people that you're around, the things that you choose, the clothes that you wear, the, the apartments that you choose to live in contribute to creating a great, greater reality for you if you will allow them to. So if money weren't an object, what would I choose creates the space of like, oh, that. Now, there are some things that if money wasn't an object, I would choose tomorrow that I do not yet have the cash in my hand to have yet. I would choose a Bentley. I do not yet have the cash in my hand to have a Bentley yet. But guess what I'm going to do soon? I'm going to go test drive a Bentley. I'm going to be like, what would it take to have a car like that or an Aston Martin or a car that my body really wants instead of one that I'm settling for? Now, in the meantime, I might go buy a Lexus. They're only $35,000 and not $250,000, right? And my body does really like that. So I'm not saying don't eliminate the middle things, but it's like, cool, I would choose that. So what would it take to create as Bentley energy so that the Bentley can show up? Wow, what is that energy? How do I bring that into my world and create as that energy? Okay, so you're including all of these different energies into what it is you're choosing, what it is you're being, what it is you're creating. Every time I create a program, I'm, in, I'm looking at all the energies that I want to include, like the energies of wealth and the energies of, of uh, I don't even know, I don't have words for all of them. I've just got a sense. And that's the thing about energy is I just have a sense. So like I'll know the colors when they pop and I'll know the, the, the image when it pops. And I include all of those energies into what I'm creating so that those energies can actualize on the planet in a million different ways through my programs, through my conversations with people, through my, um, et cetera, right? Those energies actualize in a hundred different ways. Okay, cool. So back to the pragmatic piece. So this is the, these are, we're flipping between the, the energy, the being and the doing, the being and the doing. They're, they're this interplay, right? Like when you want to make a cup of coffee, you don't just sit in your chair and be the energy of coffee. You get out of your chair, you walk to the kitchen, you put the grinds in the thing, you put, you boil the hot water, da, 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 you pour it in the cup, you put the sugar, you put the cream, you put the Baileys, you have a coffee. 
right? Or you walk across the street to Starbucks and they have coffee. But either way, there's doing involved, right? There's doing involved in everything that we do or that we have in our lives, right? Um, you can't just be the energy of paying your bills. You actually have to click a button or write a check to pay your bills. You can't just be the energy of having $10,000 a month. You have to be willing to do something different as well. So you've got to look at, okay, what, who do I have to add? What do I have to add to my life to be able to do what I'd like to do with a lot of ease? So for me, that was adding people because I hate figuring things out on my own. I actually don't like going to YouTube and, and watching videos on how to do something. I want somebody to show me because then they're live. They're right there. I can ask them questions. It shortcuts it. Like, dun, 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 dun. It's the Zorro thing. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, my head's going a million miles a minute. So I want somebody to show me. I know that about myself. You may not be like me. You may love YouTube. And let me tell you, there is, there is a YouTube video for everything if you want to learn how to do something, okay? There's webinars for everything. There's a YouTube video. So what do you have to add to your process to, to instigate, to catalyze your brilliance out into the world? Who or what do you have to add? So initially, I added George. George showed me how to do my first telecall. My first telecall um, went out into the world at, with trembling hands. I had to make my first video, create my first YouTube channel. I was sweating, I was red. I don't even remember what it looked like, I should find it. Um, and I did it. And I think I had like 100 people on it. It was crazy. But the graphics were incredible. The graphics were incredible. They were an incredible invitation. They matched the energy. I was willing to put myself out there. Um, it, was a, it was a combination of factor where it went, it was ready to be. And so people came and it was free and I showed up and I definitely over-delivered times a godzillion. <laughs> I, like, I over-delivered. I processed everybody to within an inch of their life. I don't think it was a successful call. I was supposed to invite people into strategy sessions. I forgot. Then when I did, I got like 30 of them and I processed them and gave them everything they needed in that 30 minutes, which was not what that was supposed to be. I did not make any money off of it. And it created. It didn't matter. It created something different. It create, like, like George had this whole strategy. He's like, you're going to do this and you're going to do this and this is how much money you're going to make. And I'm like, okay. So I went out there and just did it wrong, <laughs> according to George. But it didn't matter because it created something different for my business. So, man, I got to meet 40 fucking amazing people who got to experience my brand new facilitation, which I'm sure was full of conclusions, but was amazing nonetheless. I got to have testimonials from people after that, you know, that said, you changed my life. And I'm like, really? I can do that? I got confidence out of that in me, right? Like I got to see, I didn't die. I did not die on that telecall. I did not show up and pass out. I was red. I was uncomfortable. I did not die. I know that's crazy but I didn't die. That was huge. And then, I, and then after that, there was, I, I think there was big spaces in between my creations at that point I, because whatever that was. But it gave me the confidence to go, okay, wow, if I can do that, what else can I do? What else am I capable of? And that's what creating the way, creating your ideas and putting them out into the world, that's what it contributes to you. Of like, it gives you the confidence to go, wow, I can actually do this. And that is invaluable. So everything that doesn't allow you to embark on the journey that will give you the confidence that you need to keep creating, will you destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, only insurance, boys and beyonds. Cool. Um, gosh, I have so many questions I could choose. Does anybody have any barking at them right now? Like, ask the question or you will die. Okay. Yeah, Crystal. Yes, I knew you were there. Long time no see. Hi, <laughs> how are you? Doing good. Good. Um, I, I, I've spoken to you so many times in the past about you keep saying about creation and all that. And I noticed that um, whenever, like when I'm not sitting down to create, I have ideas. The minute that I sit down, everything just disappeared, froze, and I couldn't do it. And then I stopped distracting myself, and then I got all fucked up. Okay, sit down somewhere else. Here's the thing, you guys. Like, there, there, I know this is going to be really, this is going to sound cheeky and a little bit fucked up. But literally, there are going to be places and spaces in your house where you've decided you have to work, 
Like, Wendy, I happen to know you have an office. Like, you and I have had many, many conversations. By the way, Wendy's online business went from zero to, like, I see her everywhere now. She's got her own logo. She's got photographs. Like, Wendy and I did some coaching together, and she actually has a presence. And I don't know exactly what's showing up in your world because we haven't talked in a while. But I see you everywhere. And I remember when I first started talking to you, you were like, you had all these points of view about Facebook and, and being out there. And now you're like, you're like Wendy, the mindset coach. I'm like, fuck yeah, you go girl. <laughs> this is, and this is a huge piece about creating you guys is actually acknowledging what you've created. <laughs> like, have you acknowledged how far you've come? <laughs> first of all, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, everything that is you destroy it and create all that. Yes. <laughs> I rock in a pod pock, all my shirts, boys and girls. I saw you the other day. I'm like, you go girl. Like you've got a presence now. Like, that's awesome. So literally though, like there's, there's these plate, like you have an office, you have a desk that you sit down and I'm going to create. Well, is that fun for your body or is just your body create more when it's out on a walk? <laughs> Actually, you know what? You say, like, I realize that when I'm sitting down, uh, I feel tired. Yes. So stop it. Okay. Stop it. Do something different. Stand up. <sighs> All right. I guess you're, I, I have been ignoring what my body is telling me then. Yes. And you are not the only one. A lot of us do this. I'm actually, even sitting here, I feel tired and I want to move. Okay, bye-bye. It was nice talking to you. <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm listening. But I can get up and walk now that you're talking about it. But this is something to know about yourselves, you guys. I actually, it was a conversation I was having with Saskia. Saskia, I'm glad you're here. We were talking about writing. Saskia is a, a writer. Um, and writing can be, is, requires a computer. Requ you know, you got to be near a computer to write. <laughs> But we were talking about, um, I think this thing of like, where, where does stuff flow for you? Where does stuff just come out of you? Like, where, where are you in the world? What are the, what's the environment when things are just flowing? What is the environment? Do you have candles next to you? Is it nighttime? Is it morning time? Are you on a walk? Are you in a coffee shop? Like when, when are you at an airport? Cause I know when I start to fly, like I get all of these ideas because I know nobody's going to get a hold of me. And even if they can, all I'm going to tell them is I'm flying today. So my creativity goes through the roof in an airport, in an airport. Um, and so if you know that about yourself, if you start to pay attention to yourself of where you are most creative, you can start to take advantage of that. So I was saying to Saskia that for my writing, like I write better at night. I'm not a morning writer. I'm a morning like, hey, what's going on? I'm going to talk to everybody in Europe and find out and let's get into email and create like I'm a like uh, energizer bunny, not sort of like I'm a partially dressed hair to the side energizer bunny in the morning but I'm on the computer creating in the morning so writing in the morning is like it requires for me a space a languid open warm space well in reality I could actually create that for myself in the morning if I go down the road a little I could I could create that for myself or I could just capitalize that and write at night so this is true for anything that you create how do you create do you get all your ideas when you're out for a walk Bring your shit with you. Bring your camera and your selfie stick. When I shower. <laughs> Bring it in the shower. You could start a whole video series of showering with Wendy, which would be totally <laughs> unique. But you, this is seriously, you guys, this is a key. You have to be willing to see how you function and use it to your advantage. If you don't, you're missing out on the best material. You're missing out on some of your best moments. <laughs> it's true because I find that by the time I finish with the shower and come and sit down, it's like... It's done. It's good. Yeah. Get yourself a waterproof camera, woman. I can't wait to see that video. <laughs> this is how serious creation is, you guys. It's very serious. You have to do it a certain way and look a certain way. So here I go. I talk to you about professional pictures and professional stuff. And then I'm like, get your videos in the shower. There's a whole willingness to just go, where, where does the magic happen and how can I capture it? Where does the magic happen and how can I capture it? Where does your magic happen? Does it happen when you're in front of a big steaming cup of coffee in a coffee shop? Get yourself a little monkey tripod, then put your phone on it and smile at everybody as they watch you make a video. Get yourself a laptop and take it with you. Where can you start to take advantage of your life in ways that you've never been willing to take advantage of it before? Cool? 
Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I like watching you show up. It's very fun for me. Okay. Um, I'm looking through my questions here. So what would it, so we only have 11 minutes. So if anybody has anything burning, I'm totally open. Um, if I missed anything, like, can you take this and go create something now? Like what else would you like to know to walk away from this and go, yeah, I can re listen to this and to, and write down these things. So you want to, what is the thing that you would like to actualize next in the world? What can you choose to actualize it? What skills do you need to learn to actualize it? Where can you go to find those skills and to ask for those for people to teach you those or to find them on YouTube? Um, who can you add to your life that will mentor, coach, um, or promote if you're already at that phase? What phase are you in and what would you like to create next? And where are you trying to get it right? Crystal? Yes. Um, is there a way to get yourself more comfortable with um, uh, uh, shooting videos? Because I've been out on my own for a few days now and I've been, um, uh, I have my uh, phone on a tripod and I, I'm trying to make some nice videos of myself, but I hate looking at myself and hate hearing my own voice. And when I was out on the beach this afternoon, I was, okay, is nobody watching? And, and am I going to do this? And then now I'm just, making little short videos of trying to get the energy of what it would look like or is there some way that I can make it more comfortable for me to yes yes there's a few things actually um, what I would do with what you've shot already is I would make yourself watch them and pock and pod yourself an interesting point of view yourself all the way through them until there's no more charged I okay. deleted most of them already. Okay. <laughs> get off this call go make another really bad one <laughs> Just sit, sit there and talk to the camera and just, okay, so here I am. I'm making a bad video. I really don't want to be doing this right now. I'm, I'm going to have to pop and pop, make that and then watch it over and over and over and pop and pod yourself. I just had a photo shoot done with Stephanie Richardson, who is an amazing photographer. And the first thing that I saw when I saw the photographs was how much weight I gained. And I was like, oh, and they were brilliant photographs. Like I'll have to show you. They're so beautiful. But all I could see was that 20 extra pounds. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I can keep hating my body or I can choose something else. So I interesting point of viewed myself, pocket pot of myself all the way through that photo shoot. Like, Oh my gosh, interesting point of view. I have this point of view, interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Okay. So that's the first piece. And that's a very important piece. The second piece is to keep doing it and to start posting them. Yeah. And, and so as you're, so, and so that's, those two pieces aside. So then there's like the creation of the video. Somebody asked me like, how do you show up so naturally on camera? I'm not totally sure. <laughs> I kind of just do. But in the beginning, I didn't. In the beginning, I was, it was kind of a theatrical production. Like, and one of the things that I really play with with video is I look right in the camera and I'm like looking in people's eyes. Like I look at that camera like it's a set of eyes and I talk to you. So that's one thing I really do. Another thing I just naturally do that you can play with that's a right voice tool is putting all of your barriers down. So what happens when you put all your barriers up is you get weird. Your mouth gets weird and your eyes go weird and you know, your face does weird things and it gets twitchy. You want to put all of your barriers down and then put them back up and then put them back down and actually do that while you're talking. Play with this on a video actually when you get off this call. Um, put, put your barriers up while you're talking. You'll probably find it hard to keep any train of thought. Put your barriers down. And what putting your barriers down does is it allows you to receive all the energies of all the people that you're going to be talking to now and in the future. It allows you to receive all the energies of what wants to come through you. It allows things to just flow out of your mouth or not flow out of your mouth. And then sometimes I'll get into a video and, and I'll just, I'll be talking, 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 and then I'll think I have more to say and there's nothing. And I'll be like, oh. yeah, that's something that's showing up for me also because when, what Wendy just said, I have, I'm thinking about shooting a video. I have lots of lots of things I want to say and what I want to talk about. And then I go out to make the video and then I'll do so blah, 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 blah. Right. Okay. And so here's <laughs> another tip for that is you want to just do one tip, one tool per video, one moment, one thing per video, which was kind of hard for me to do in the very beginning. Uh, this was one of the things Jeff Walker talked about because I want to give you everything all in one video. Um, 
So you want to make a video like a half hour. <laughs> Yeah. And, and so in the beginning, try to keep your videos to a minute to three minutes and just do one tool. And so go, Hey, the, the tool I want to talk to you about is this, and here's my story around this tool. And here's how it changed for me. And to recap, the tool is this, you know, and just play with that general format to see, um, see how that works for you. And um, one of the things that Frank Fredella taught me when I was doing videos with him, he said with, for marketing videos, he's like, you want to tell people what you're going to tell them. You want to tell people what you're going to talk about talk about what you're going to talk about and then recap of what you just talked about. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, that's a little stodgy, but I'm going to try it. And so I've been playing with that. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to talk about. And then I'm going to tell you some stories and ramble a little bit around what I want to tell you. And then I'm going to kind of bring it around to like, and so what I'd like to share with you is this freaking tool that changed blah, blah, blah for me or whatever it is your videos are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make it, I just want to, I want it to be perfect, just in a, my first thing had to be perfect. Just everything that, that, so how much do you have to judge yourself to do perfect? Yeah. yeah. Constantly. What is perfect? Yeah. No, seriously, what is perfect? I would like for you guys to post the perfect video for me some more, <laughs> but I can see it. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen some videos I really like. I've seen some that I would like to emulate to some point down the road. Like Jeff Walker shoots all his videos outside the mountains in Colorado. I'll have that. Thank you. Right. I could do it in Vancouver, but then I'd have to like take the train all the way over there. And then I have to set up and I'm in like my bedroom. That's where we're going. Right. So <laughs> what is perfect? Yeah. Everything that is, we just try and create all that. Yes, right. Wrong. Good. Bad. Pop. Pop. Online. Shorts. Boys. And you. You are the perfection of all possibilities. Thank you. Everything that doesn't allow you to be no perceive and receive that will you just train and create that. Yes. All right, we're gonna get back online shorts for the meal. Yeah. It's a question regarding oh I'll let no. you finish. No, I it's good. I just I was on a roll. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So I was telling Erna how brilliant she was. <laughs> and Thank all you. of you too. You're all included in that. <laughs> Cool. Yes, go ahead. So, so regarding Facebook, because um, they are saying Facebook, when you do Facebook Live, they give you priority, right? So I start playing with Facebook Live, but one of the things is with Facebook Live, they really literally require you to be at least there for three minutes before people start showing up. So you have to blab, like Facebook even recommend at least 10 minutes for people to show up. So you're blah, 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 blah for 10 minutes there. Oh no. That sounds terrible. <laughs> that sounds like a real problem. I know you have no problem for 10 minutes. <laughs> so what else is possible? So what would it take to outcreate that? I wonder if you could um, announce, hey, I'm going to be live at this time. If anybody wants to come play with me, come play with me at this time. I wonder how we can use Facebook Live to our advantage. So you got to ask that with every fucking thing, you guys. That has got to be your go-to question of like, yeah, but this. Well, if you stop there, it's like, what? Well, there's a book in front of my face. Well, there, I can't do it. There's a book in front of my face. What the fuck would it take to outcreate the book? What would it take to outcreate that? What would it take to start using the way that functions to your advantage? What questions do you have to ask to, to get creative and actually use it? So I don't know how that's going to show up. I haven't played with Facebook Live yet because it hasn't been enabled on my thing. But I'm going to start playing with it. Like, I'm going to see what shows up. It could also be, too, that Facebook Live, maybe it's not time yet in your business. I don't know, right? Like, if it's not creating anything, try something else, right? It's just another tool, another possibility. It's not like the end of the world or the beginning of, you know what I mean? It's just another tool. Yeah, no, I, I just start playing. Totally. Yeah. And so if you've got to talk for three minutes, where can you go in the city that would give you something to talk about? Or what, what, you know, like what could you do that would give you something to talk about? I don't know. What would that be for you? Like, would it be talking, having conversations with your dogs? <laughs> you do like your dogs. <laughs> Probably can't talk forever there. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
So we do have to go. God, that was an hour. That's crazy. So thank you for being here. And um, you're, in your email, you're going to have a link. So if you and your business want to talk about what's possible for next, if you know that you want to add a me, there's a little bit of magic in them there, Woods. If, um, like, if you're ready to create and you're ready to pop open and you want to add this to your life, I would still love to talk with you. And even if you know now is not the time, I will be rolling out different versions of this in the future. So feel free to book it anyway. And um, I am so incredibly grateful for you and for your questions. And I'm going to be using all the questions that I didn't get to to create videos and, and articles. And so I really am going to get to all of them at some point and just... Thank you for you. And if, and, and I think the only other thing I want to add, like if you guys would like, cause I'm doing the mentorship, but it also occurred to me, like if you'd like a series on this, like if there's more calls that you'd like, we can create a three call or a six call or something like that. So just mention that in an email to me, if that's something that you'd like to have as well, and we can create that moving forward. Cool. All right. You guys are unmuted. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 See you at some point. Bye. Bye. Very soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You're so welcome. Bye. Love Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.